We're now going to fit the remote for the alarm. This is a, a small compact unit. You can fit up to four of these on each alarm. This is the external wall of the garage. On the other side of this is my office. So we're actually going to mount this in the office. And then if the alarm ever does go off at night, we don't actually need to leave the house to silence the alarm. You can simply do it from the office. That's the beauty of these alarms. You can mount these small panels anywhere and they don't look out of place. We're going to put the remote for the alarm on this wall here. So I've just put a mark there in the centre. That is where the wire will come through. I've now got to drill through this wall, which is considerably thick because it's a cavity wall. And then we've got the garage wall on top of that. So we're going to use an extra long drill bit. I've taped a bag to the wall there to collect any dust. We now need to swap over to the longer drill bit, which is a metre long. So this, this is a little bit long and you shouldn't really be using a cordless machine for this. But uh, I'll just go through carefully. I've already drilled a pile at all, so it should go through pretty easily. We're now just going to place that in position and we'll just mark that ready for drilling. We're now just going to push two wall plugs in there. We can now fix the panel to the wall. This is the all inside of the garage. As you can see, we've got a little bit of burst out around that block, which is normal when you're using an SDS drill. I've now just pushed the cable access kit through there. That has given us the length that we need. I'm gonna cut a piece of plastic tube as a liner for this all. This is a piece of 15 mil John Guest plastic pipe. I'll now push that in the all, which will line it until it goes all the way in. I'm now going to go in the office and I'm going to silicone around that to prevent any drafts from blowing through it. We're now going to wire all of these wires into the back of the control panel. It's a good idea when you do this to write down which coloured wire you have put where because you need to repeat that in the actual alarm panel itself. I've now stripped 10 millimetres from the end of every wire. I'm now going to twist all the strands together and then I'm going to fold each conductor back on itself slightly. That will give us a really good connection inside of the remote. I'm now going to wire this up. I'm going to start off by putting the black wire in the zero volt terminal. And then I'm going to put the red wire in the 13 volt terminal. And then I'm going to put the white into the comms terminal. the blue into the sound terminal and then the yellow into one of the tamper terminals it doesn't matter which way around these go and then the final green wire into the other tamper terminal Then you just need to check all those are tight. And we can turn the panel over and just push some of the wire back into the wall. And then we can hang the panel on there. So we've just pulled the flap down there and I've hooked it on at the top and then pushed it in at the bottom. And you'll just have heard that little click. That was the tamper spring. So we'll now tighten the screw up underneath. 
and that is the remote keypad successfully installed. On a lot of alarms you may only have one keypad so you will only have the one cable with the one set of wires. On this particular alarm we're going to have two keypads so we're going to wire the two keypads into this terminal. You'll notice that I've stripped the wires already and we've got about 15 mil of conductor showing on each wire. If you remember earlier that we connected the keypad up we actually wrote down the colours that we used. The top terminal on this is the sound which is the blue wire. So we're going to get the two blue wires and then we're going to twist them together. And then we're going to fold the conductor back on itself. And then we're going to terminate that into the terminal. We're now going to do the comms terminal which is the two white wires. So again we're going to put them both together and then we're going to twist them. That might actually be a bit long so we're just going to snip a bit off that. And then we'll fold the conductor back on itself. And then we'll insert that into the terminal and tighten that up. So I've now got the sound comms positive and negative wired in to the remote terminal. If you look at the tamper you'll see that there's a link in there. We need to remove that link. The tamper wires are actually wired in series not in parallel. If you put those four wires into those two terminals your tamper would never work because you'd always have a closed circuit at one of the tampers. So what we need to do with these four wires is create a loop. So we need to connect the yellow to the green and then terminate the green and the yellow into the remaining two terminals. That will give us a circuit. As soon as that circuit is broken the alarm will go into the tamper mode. Because this is very low voltage, it's only 12 volts, we can actually use a technique where you twist the wires together and tape them. That would be sufficient for an alarm panel. You have to make sure you do it properly. Obviously if they come undone you will get a false alarm. It will go into tamper. We're going to get the green wire there and the yellow wire and we're going to twist them together. We're going to give them a really good twist. Then we're going to fold that back onto the wire there. We're now just going to terminate the green and the yellow into the remaining tamper terminals. I've now got a small piece of insulation tape and I'm now just going to wrap that around the two wires that we joined there. Once we've done that we can just check that all the terminals are tight. We can then just move the wires back so that none of them are in the way of the case. That is how to wire up the remote keypad.